Taliban bans the farming of opium poppies. On April 3rd, uh, Haibutullah Akhundaza, the Taliban supreme leader, announced a ban on the cultivation of opium poppies. He also stated, quote, if anyone breaks the decree, we will destroy the farm immediately and treat the lawbreaker according to Sharia law. The announcement also prohibits the trade of alcohol, hashish, and heroin. This banning was announced amidst a crippling economic conditions brought on by Western sanctions. According to the United Nations Office of Drug and Crime, Af Afghan opiates supply 8 out of 10 opiate users worldwide. Many farmers in Afghanistan were forced to swap legal crops for opium plants after years of war, drought, and financial sanctions. According to Al Jazeera, the ban on the cultivation of opium poppy and outlined the selling of heroin is a bid for international recognition. Following the announcement, Abdul Salam Hanafi, the acting deputy prime minister, requested international support in helping Afghan farmers reliant on opium production diversify their crops. Um, this is kind of based. I don't know what you think. Like Taliban, are we are we agreeing with agreeing with Taliban right now? I don't know. I think this is a... okay. So I don't think um, it's that simple. Yeah. Like, so in in a vacuum where this just happened in isolation, I'd be like, oh, cool, great. I also would like there to be less opiate supply around the world. However, um, people in our live chat are having the same reaction I had. AJ is saying, are they stupid? And Baraj is saying, does Afghan Afghanistan want more poverty? So to okay. me, that's what's shocking and surprising about this is if people <clears throat> know pretty much anything about Afghanistan and particularly how the Taliban finances its operations, you know what? that this whole trade is highly it, it's very important to their economy this is this no. is this is it yeah Wait. they make okay. over this is like over a billion dollars this is like 1.6 to 1.8 billion dollars okay. per year yes yeah. that is true that is true okay but that's what you know about afghanistan but if anybody also knows anything about the taliban is that they banned this whole thing all before when they were in power as well okay yes they so, did they did so this is like, I don't know why people are surprised, but when Taliban was in power before, they banned it, and now they're back in power and they're banning it again. So, I mean, the, the Taliban doesn't mess around. They're like, okay, so they when they think this is wrong, they're like, you know, they, the priority for them is to ban whatever is wrong, regardless of the consequences, okay? But, okay, so maybe their reasoning for... So their reasoning, because I'm a consequentialist, right? I don't think something should be banned regardless of the consequences. Okay, so maybe I don't agree with the Taliban because I care about the consequences more than just, um, you know, being banning something based on its principle. But I do think the consequences of opium is higher then the negative consequences is higher than the money that it brings in. So I think this is a net positive. I do understand that this is going to make Afghanistan more poor and people are going to suffer because of it. Afghanistan needs money, like it really needs money right now. Okay. And banning opium is going to, is like make, is going to make situations in Afghanistan a lot more desperate. Okay. And that is the negative side of it. But on average, the negative impact to the entire planet um, of opium, the, the the benefit is way less than the positive. You know what I mean? Yeah, the positive is more money to Afghanistan. The negative is more poverty, you know, and lives ruined. I think more lives will be ruined from opium being allowed than the, you know, than the lives that in Afghanistan is going to be ruined because of the money not going in on average. That on average, this is a good, this is a net positive. Yeah, I will for the I mean, so this will maybe put a dent in it and it won't happen overnight, right? But for the people who continue to work in this trade, it'll just get more dangerous and it'll get increasingly more dangerous for the users globally because there will be a continued demand, but it will there will be more scarcity. 
So people will start going to other means as well. They'll start maybe going to fentanyl or something, especially in, in North America, which is a huge problem. Um, yeah, but I but think we, less of less of this being available means less people will have access to whatever harmful drugs there is. You know, we'll go to other things which are more available, like fentanyl, which is worse. Yeah, but at the, at but it's this is a demand supply thing. Yes, more people will go to the next thing. Okay, but the, because of less supply, prices of everything will increase, and less people will be able to get access to. Yes, I'm not saying there will not by be an alternative. I'm just saying this is. I'm not trying to sound like I'm pro opium trade. By the way, I'm I not pro illegal drug I'm, trade. I'm just trying to. I'm just saying, like elucidate some of the issues surrounding. This. I'm just saying, even even with the examples that you give, that some people will find other things. The net effect on average is when you mm -hmm. reduce supply, less people will be able to. Less lives will be ruined on average. Okay, this is just how the market works. You supply it less, there will be less. Yeah, of course, of course. Level. Okay, okay. So, what I what I find really interesting is. You know, the deputy prime minister calling for the international community to try to help Afghan farmers find a way to diversify their crops. Like, N US and NATO forces have been trying to do that for decades. They tried to do that for decades. It didn't work. It hasn't worked very well. When the Taliban all. did it, okay, yeah, but the, when the Taliban did it, they, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, yeah. If, if for some reason, the talib when the Taliban bans something, it it gets banned. <laughs> okay. When I NATO wonder tries, why. <laughs> <laughs> when NATO tries to stop it, they can't do it because they don't go through the extreme measures that the Taliban goes through. Uh, ha! To... Freaking pansies. No. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, you're right. NATO failed, but the when you know 20 years ago, when the Taliban was like no opium trade, they were like, yeah, it stopped. They're like you could see, actually, you could see the graph. Like you could see the supply just like plummeted. Okay, so they they know how to do it. The Taliban, they're good at banning stuff. Yeah, I don't know. It will be really interesting to see how this plays out because <laughs> when, I mean, like you said, it's it. <laughs> Katie's saying, I mean, they have ban in their name. It got Taliban. Yeah, Eric was saying the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, it, it is nothing if not consistent. Um, <laughs> it'll be interesting uh, yeah. to see how this plays out as well as how they try to diversify their crops because when U.S. NATO forces tried to do this, I mean, it just, dr dr like, just dramatically failed, partially just because of so much um, corruption and they would just kind of reuse supplies and different sell things around so that they could just continue their poppy farming at an even greater scale. Hmm. Um, Hopefully they start growing wheat and grains because the world needs more wheat and grain producers after everything going on in Ukraine and Russia. Yeah, that's going to be one hundredth of the you know, price. It's better than nothing. <laughs> yeah, yes. Anyways, I think also really, really, really needs to be less reliant on food imports. Like I think 40, 43% of their GDP was from foreign aid. Like that's wild. Like D is saying getting high on a law. It's a law. <laughs> wait, there was another thing D was saying about the Quran and high oh by the way uh, youtube we're not encouraging this any drug use of course we're just no, covering the news we're covering the news okay this is not an endorsement of using any uh, illegal substances okay follow guys follow the law um what is do you say do you say according to the quran the fruits like grape date fig olive and pomegranate are gifts and heavily fruit fruits of god no opium. Okay. So get get mm. high off of those. <laughs> yeah, but but technically there is nothing that says opium is haram in the Quran as well. So I don't know where they get that from. I think they do it by the spirit of the law. You know what I mean? Maybe they say like, why would is Islam ban like wine, right? So for example, Islam doesn't ever say that alcohol is haram. It says wine is illegal, right? So, uh, so people said, like, why would wine be illegal? It must be because you get drunk. Therefore, it should apply to all alcoholic drinks, not just wine. Mm. 
So I think like if you maybe maybe the lo- reasoning is that if you extend that, then you should basically ban anything substance that alters your mind, uh, including opium. Maybe. And they've they, tried to do the same for tobacco because of also hadiths about, you know, no. doing things that are harmful to your body. And mm-hmm. they tried this in Morocco like a couple centuries ago, and it literally almost led to them overthrowing the king. <laughs> like, oh. you're going to give us a freaking nicotine, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, guys, if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Cali, you know like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.